and uh, or rather with uh, uh, other stakeholders. I'm not so sure, uh, Deputy Chairperson, Honourable Minister, how the planning system works these days because it was not enough for ministers to come to Parliament and complain about urban sprawl and the issues of migration and give long lectures about, I'm not saying that you did, but I'm saying generally, about a global phenomena called urban migration. It would be important for ministers to also state what they are doing with other ministries in respect of dealing with this matter of migration. I would have expected the minister, and this is by way of advice that I'm also now giving, that you would be able to know which areas primarily also are subject of receiving migration and which areas are the ones that have the push effects. I would suggest that in the areas that push people away, that you work together with other ministries as government as a whole and say let us create pull factors in the areas where people are coming from so that we reduce the push factors and increase the pull factors so that people stay at home. It will be necessary for the ministry to say, look, let's work with agriculture. Let's work with industrialization. Say at Oshikuku, a lot of people have come over the past three years from Oshikuku or from Okalongo or from Ondangwa Urban and, and say, see what, what can be done there really. Instead of us not dealing with this matter at the point of, of commencement and having to deal at the point where people have actually uh, migrated already. I think that, that strategy, Honorable Minister, must be, must be looked, and I'm happy that Honorable Kapofi agrees with me, so that you have a, a more sustainable strategy to address with this migration issue. I think it, 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 it is important that we look at it. Then, um, <clears throat> I think, um, Minister, you have highlighted correctly that the process of servicing of land has a lot of stakeholders, a lot of processes, and so on. I think you need to go and look at which processes, because as you correctly say on page two, this process of urban planning, is demarcation, and all of these things have are a driving factor of cost to the end user. Why don't you go and look at how you can shorten those various processes? Hmm? so that there is a, an overall cost reduction. And quite a radical plan that we have had, which now has become common cause, is the giving of free urban land to our people. Um, the high-level panel that President Godfrey Hage Kengop has uh, created indicated that free plots is, is a possibility. The Swapo Party Manifesto has also indicated, if I read it correctly, that you want to give uh, free land. Of course, the lead institution that talked of free urban land is the Landless People's Movement. I know my brother Venani has for many years talked about urban resettlement program, but LPM also spoke about free urban land. I'm highlighting these parties to, to suggest that perhaps we have a common uh, denominator here, all of us, and that perhaps this matter that is so political at the end of the day seems not to have many political parties contradicting themselves. We'll have to perhaps talk about modalities so that we for once and all create black ownership really and, and, and sort, of, sort of help our people out of the morass of, of propertylessness uh, in, in the shortest possible time. Um, I want to ask also, Honorable Minister, part of a minister's budget request is also feedback. You have indicated that, gov that there was combined effort with private sector, government, and so on last year in the financial year uh, in which 383 million was spent on construction of houses and all of these things that you spoke about. Well, how much of this 383 is government money? How much of it is private sector money? Which private sector institutions have been helping to build this, this, this uh, houses and so on. And I must honestly say, the pace at which you have reported houses being constructed is a disaster. Um, uh, uh, the deputy leader of LPM, Sebebe, spoke about the principle, which is also what LPM stands for, of remunicipalization. Very important principle to bring local authorities back to the fray uh, of constructing houses, of 
modeling the types of housing units as the Honorable Deputy Minister Anna Shiweda was also saying, in respect of their locality, so that uh, a non-local authority would more or less know which type of houses its residents can afford. Just like Kitmosop municipality would know which type of houses and which price range its people can afford. So that we don't have a, a uniform approach of NHE going in building houses, but that we localize the, the construction of houses in respect of, of the capacity of people to pay houses. I was so shocked, Honorable Deputy uh, Chair, you go to Korihas, and when you look at the area of Korihas, primarily teachers, nurses, and then subsistence farmers, essentially, the house that NHU would build in Korihas is so expensive that it actually is way above the ordinary bread line and the average income of 80 to 90 percent of the residents of Korihas. But when, as government, you speak of housing delivery, you have built 100 houses in Korihas. But at the end of the day, it is not sufficient for houses to be built. Somebody must occupy it, and that occupy, occu occupant should not be renting. They must have bought that property. In Korihas, many people cannot afford to buy the houses. They end up renting the houses. And that surely was the, not the model for which NHE originally was created. And I think, Honorable Minister, you've got to deal with this matter. <coughs> and see, for instance, in those instances in towns like Korihas, in Kietmans, mass housing, houses got dilapidated and so on. You've got to urgently, Carisburg, houses standing empty. You've got to deal with this matter as, an, as a low-hanging fruit and say, look, listen, we have made the investment already. We've made it. The houses were packed at a particular price. Can we then, in preponderance to what the average affordability ratio is in town X, can we reduce those prices and therefore allow those price, those properties to be sold so that money can again be regenerated. I think it's a very progressive proposal that sort of gets, gets you away from this issue of you've got to go and renovate houses because it's, it's, it's just a rented property and so on. I'm pushing very hard, Honorable Deputy, because of your time constraints. Honorable Minister, <clears throat> Omaheke Regional Council has been shrouded in a gravy train of corruption. In fact, one of the members of this house, who used to be a regional councillor, is accused of having, as alleged, monies of the regional council transferred into his account. Having had that money into his account, parked that money in an investment account for some time, a couple of months, permitted by the syndicate of a number of regional councillors, as alleged, when that money drew interest, they returned that money to the coffers of the regional council. And these fellows are now of the biggest cattle owners in the Omaheke region. How far is the investigation? How far is that investigation? One of them was removed by the president. Another is a serving member of this house. And I will give you the name uh, when, when you request it. Such things, whichever political party you belong to, are not good. Because it also reinforces, at the one hand, while you spend money on fighting corruption, mm -hmm. at the other hand, any political party, of course, in this instance, SWAPO, but I know there is no direct policy of SWAPO to promote corruption, mm -hmm. but it happens, that you then, on the left hand, allow a person that has those allegations to come to a very sovereign place and sit and be, pretend to be honorable. Please look into to, to that matter. One minute left. Uh -uh. Mm. We have come to work here, uh, Honorable Kafula. I know, Honorable Page, uh, <clears throat> Okahanja oh, and Rundu talking. Town Councils, I'm being pushed by the, the Deputy Chairperson, who I also appreciate has the time issue. Rundu Okahanja Town Council, status update, what has happened? Honorable Minister, you've got to understand the statement, budget statement of the Honorable Finance Minister and correlate the principle which he has articulated and has been a government policy of right-sizing civil service. 
Honorable Kapofi knows your, when you are cabinet secretary, how many people you are recruiting every year and that the public sector actually ballooned and that it became a political and now actually an economic problem, the wage bill. Compare that to again another correct principle, but perhaps one that needs to be revisited in relation to its economic impact of decentralization, the principle of decentralization. You keep on creating director and deputy director positions in regional councils, high level paying jobs. When you go actually to some of the most remote regions, directors and deputy directors and CROs are at cattle and goat and sheep auctions. Impact is not found. The directors at regional level are paid at the same level of a director that supervises these directors. This director, the super director sits in Ventuk. Same level salary, there are many directors there of rural development, of this development, that development. But when you actually go, and I have had the fortunate uh, position under Lucas Ifikepunye Bohamba, to actually work at a regional council, uh, uh, at least in proximity to a regional council, where you just sometimes wonder what the productivity measures are. This is a very, very serious matter. The, the, the question of productivity, Honorable Kapofi, the question of result-orientedness, the question of, uh, of, of obtaining results, is a good objective and spoken about in Ventuk. <laughs> not so outside in the regions, trust me. It is not as important in the regions, no. And you've got to now, I suggest, question this principle of decentralization and say, is this thing really still working as was intended? Should we not hold it and restructure the whole program and say, look, does decentralization always mean establishment must take again another person on board? Does it always mean it? Does it always mean an additional director, an additional deputy director? Does it also not mean other things? Perhaps to expand mandates of existing officials, perhaps to re redraft job descriptions uh, so that you, you can add value to those staff members that are already there. I proceed uh, to the matter of traditional authorities, Honorable Minister, as one of my final points. May his soul rest in peace, King Kaluma is dead. He is no more with us. And I, I'm very careful in saying this point, particularly because the old man is deceased, and I do so with all respect. He has been almost a permanent chairperson of the Council of Traditional Leaders. Very wrong. Such that people began to think that he is some sort of a supreme king over Namibia. Wrong. That position must be a, 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 an elective position that does not have any political party interfering when people want to elect another chairperson. It's wrong. It must be rotational by, 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 by prescribed, uh, Honorable Kawana. It must be rotational so that we can have the Hambukushu chief also becoming a chairperson. So that we can have uh, the Topnar chief also becoming the chairperson. And that cements the oneness supposedly and the unity of the country as a whole. So that we have a, a hang om Morning, morning. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just want to want you to round up. I am rounding up, but mm. it's getting better now, actually. Uh, you, you look nice with the red. By round the up, round um, up. <laughs> <laughs> so that so that you 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 begin to to show this unity and and many other things and so on and so forth and so on. Then, I think, Swapo Party, sometimes intentionally, other times unintentionally but all the time wrongly, has copied the apartheid regime in maintaining, because of the signature that must be given by a minister or by a governor, traditional authority leaders that were democratically removed by their people. Case in point, Chief Tase, no support in his base, deputy chairperson of the Council of Traditional Leaders, no support. And we cannot play around, and uh, Honorable Pea Mushilenga was talking about an important point where the historic interventionist approach of the apartheid regime actually created in many communities 
confusion between who is from the royal lineage, who is not. Though some of the chiefs that were appointed through uh, 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 apartheid regime connections have decided they have suddenly from 1970 on constituted a royal house. And that's where the confusion comes in. If community has decided to remove a person democratically, yes. ministers should accept. Okay. Governors should accept so that community's right to determine their future is not limited by a law that does not speak to the essential needs of the people. Yes. Okay. Also, yes, yes, Honorable uh, Chair, I'm, I'll, I'll finish now, Deputy Chair. Also, there must be a way to quickly capitalize traditional authority development funds with strong accountability measures so that there is a way in which traditional authorities also activate their development funds. Some traditional authorities are very weak, others are very strong, because of structural issues also, you've got to look at it. I know it's a lot of work, I think. Honorable Mujalenga one day commented that at Murt, you can't keep somebody for long, or you get crazy. Um, the last point really is, Honorable <coughs> Minister, that CROs and the work that they do must be checked and carefully checked because reporting lines of, of, of CROs and these people it sometimes gets confused. Do you report to the minister? Do you report to the peers? Do you report to the chairperson or to the councillors? There is sometimes that problem. It, it has to be sorted out and so on and so on. But there are other issues that we would have loved to share with you, but at some other stage I've asked for an appointment. We'll continue to share that. But I wish you all the best and we will be available to support you in, in the work that you do. Your function of rural development must be taken seriously. You have a budget for self-help of 12 million. It's too small. It amounts maybe to 400,000 per constituency. It's too small a budget. Maybe some of these budget lines can be taken to agriculture and some other places. But if you want to make an impact, Honorable Minister, in rural development in your ministry, check to scale up the RPRP, the Rural Reduction Rural Poverty Reduction Program. Try to financially scale up that program because that program makes impact. Thank you very much. I, I recognize Honorable Mkuilongo. Can we try to stick to five minutes? It's going to be three o'clock now. Hmm?